Coming in pretty good. That's Talk Sport UK on 1089. And that's uh, radio from the United Arab Emirates. Uh, Djibouti, actually, uh, in the Persian Gulf. So that's coming in. I, I've had a, a bad run of noise here uh, on my antenna in the last uh, couple of days, and uh, I was getting quite discouraged. It was a bacon-frying, electrical, hashy noise. And I was wondering what had happened outside to trigger this noise all of a sudden, because my reception's been exceptional uh, since I put up this new antenna about a month ago. And... Uh, the noise started about 10 days ago, and I tried to see if there was anything I could do to, to make it go away. I tried changing my filter settings and some other things, but the noise was still there. So I got a little, a little discouraged, and I walked away from the radio a little bit. But what I did tonight, just because this is one of the things that you should do when you're experiencing radio interference, is I took a small portable shortwave radio with me, and I walked around the house outside. And when I did so, I went out to the antenna itself and I listened for the noise and it's not there. The noise is not at the antenna, which is excellent because my biggest fear was that there's something going on here within a mile or so of here, electrically some bad transformer or uh, some other problem. And my antenna was picking it up and mixing it up with the, uh, with the signals and ruining the audio. So it wasn't at the antenna. So I walked around with my radio a little farther and a little closer to the house, and sure enough, the noise is worst when I'm at the house itself and when I'm inside the house. I can't pinpoint specifically what might be going on, but there's something in the wiring of the house that's causing interference. So that's actually a good thing because that's in my control. I can decide uh, what to do about that noise. Now, ideally, what I would normally do, or what any amateur radio operator would normally do, if they have noise that they suspect is coming from inside the house, is they would turn everything on, listen for the noise inside the home on the radio, and then go down to the circuit panel, usually in the basement, and shut off one circuit at a time to see if the noise changes or stops altogether. And as you're turning these circuits on and off, you should find the one that's powering the device that's causing the noise. Then it's just a matter of identifying the device. And some of these devices can be wide ranging for all kinds of uh, appliances and controllers and things. Uh, there are several potential problems. The odd part about this noise is, is that when I first set my antenna up, I didn't hear the noise, nothing. The, the band was absolutely quiet and it was for about two weeks. And then the noise just suddenly appeared. And I can't think of anything I've installed in the home or purchased or turned on for the first time that would cause that noise, except for one thing. I've rearranged my ham shack here and all, it's all the same equipment, but it's all perhaps slightly in different places, being powered differently underneath. I've moved some things around. Um, I suspect that the noise may be coming from right here beside me. Uh, and I'll likely find that out the hard way because when I power down the circuit that powers this room, likely the noise will stop. And if it does, that's fine. I will then try to, to uh, suss out the noise source one thing at a time. But the beautiful part of this is it's not coming from outside. It's not coming from some place that I have no control over. I have control over this noise. So what I've done in the short term is I've taken some noise suppression devices and I'll show you uh, a couple here in this bag. These are called ferrites and these ferrites are essentially made up of an iron powder and you've probably seen these before because these things are frequently clipped to USB cables or a laptop power cord you'll see these uh, things that are at either end of the power cord. 
the purpose of those uh, particular things is to cut down on electrical noise and interference that goes in and out of the power cord. Not so much to make it easier for ham radio operators, but just to uh, reduce the, the, the spray of electrical energy in around you. So these cores are very handy uh, because I bought you know several different sizes of them uh, about a year ago. And what you can do with these cores is you can, if you see, they actually can close, open and close. And they've got inside a little channel that is about the right size for a wire. So what you can basically do is take one of these cores and close it around the wire. You can see right through it there. Uh, and what it does is there's electrical energy that travels on the outside of the wire or is almost on the very outside of the wire. And that sets up electrical fields that travel up and down the wire. And that's where I think my noise is coming from, these electrical fields. What these cores do is they interrupt those electrical fields. They, they come along the wire, they hit this core, and they get absorbed, and they go away. So on the other side of the core, uh, the noise should be reduced or maybe even eliminated altogether. So what I've done on my feed line is I've snapped a few of these cores into place, and it actually looks like it's reduced the interference to some degree. It's not gone altogether, so I have more work to do. But it has knocked it down, and for the first time in a couple of weeks, I'm hearing what I think is good quality that I was almost the same kind of quality that I was hearing before. So I'm uh, pretty happy about that. I do have more work to do. The weekend's coming up. I'll probably fiddle at it a bit. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the the feed line that comes in from the uh, the wall of the the outer wall of the house into the uh, software defined radio in here because right now it's made up of three or four lengths of 75 ohm cable that are spliced together with those little joining things. Um, you've probably seen them at, you know, behind your TV set sometimes. And b by its very engineering, these things should work fine. That shouldn't introduce noise. But I did notice when I rattled one of them, the noise jumped around a bit uh, on the radio. So I'm thinking that if I take all those pieces of cable out and I replace it with one nice long length of... Uh, quad shield cable, which I have a, a little stock of in one of my totes out in the garage, uh, and then put a new connector on the end of it, and then snap some of these ferrites on as well. I think that will help cure or maybe completely cure my noise problem. So uh, just a, a quick explanation of some of the challenges that we have in, in the radio hobby, whether it's listening to shortwave stations or getting on the air with ham radio. I will be getting on the air in a little, about an hour's time with uh, some of my buddies on Thursday nights. We get on uh, around uh, Prince Edward Island and we just chat about things. So that's coming up in about an hour. I'm looking forward to that. About to have supper now. But uh, confident and uh, feeling good in the, in the thought, the notion that I may have found at least the beginning of my noise problem and might have a chance to cure it. So that's just an update from PEI as we continue to improve the radio setup here for what will be uh, a dark, long COVID winter until all the vaccines are deployed to everybody and you. See you later.